they are. So you can't be for me to state them. I think it's absolutely possible that some people do end up going the other way. It really just depends on the type of the debate. I think that if you like kind of mm -hmm. dive into the online discourse, I think you can kind of get a feel for how people will go based on the conversation you see. Um, you have to watch like your own forums and then you've got to watch like the adversarial forums or the opposition forums. And you just have to see like the general gist of it. If you have a conversation with somebody and you're seeing a lot of doubt on the other side and this doubt is in the form of like saying like, oh, well, for some reason my debater was a cuck this debate, blah, 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 blah. Like that generally <laughs> bodes well for you. If you see like a lot of doubt expressed on your side, then that generally bodes not well for you. So it just depends really yeah. on your performance time and time and time again. There are definitely also, times though where you could probably, I'm sure that I've made, I'm sure that some it. some of Nick Fuentes' fans probably came from me at some point. Some of Mike from PA's fans probably came from me at some point. Like I'm sure that there have been other extremists that I've blood fans off to. Um, it happens. See, uh, yeah. yeah, but I mean like you, you just, you have to do your best. Uh, but like one, one, one general trend of this conversation too, and I know that the response is gonna be like, oh, well we can do both, which I agree. But it feels like right-leaning movements are so much more constructive and left-leaning movements are so much more destructive. Like in my idea of like a right-leaning movement is people going out and finding out how many people they can radicalize and left-leaning people are just like, how many people can I go out and destroy and, and keep from being de-radicalized? De and I feel like you're always yeah, gonna yeah. be one step behind when your focus is on destroying other groups rather than yeah, trying no, to build up more we, momentum we behind your own. absolutely have to do both. Absolutely. And, and I, I, consistently, I consistently advocate for like community organizing, community outreach and all that sort of fucking shit, right? And not fucking like just shitting on random liberals because like your mum and dad are probably fucking liberals. 90% of the fucking uh, country is some dipshit fucking liberal, right? Like I completely fucking uh, Excuse agree. me, liberals are big. So the simple way that right many people are not saying, hey, make sure not to let any lefties in our Discord servers or they'll convert people, you know? They don't do it. They have a way more laissez-faire attitude towards this and they're able to recruit way more effectively. Uh, I think in yeah, large part- If, any, if any lefty goes into their Discord, they just get bullied the fuck out. Like, that, that happens in right spaces too. But that happens in right spaces all the time too. There's plenty of right leaning people yeah, that specifically won't come into these conversations specifically because of the fact that they feel like they're just going to get bullied. And what we're what the argument is whether or not that's beneficial, whether or not that's harmful. But like simply pointing out that left people going to the right that doesn't like actually benefit your argument at all. Furthermore, um, the way that the, the way someone said it in my chat, uh, which I thought made a lot of uh, a lot a lot of sense, is they were saying that the right uh, the, the left does uh, purity tests and then the right do, does impurity tests um and it's it's pretty gross uh if you really look at it like it's almost impossible to line up with the exact definition of what some leftists feel is like appropriate and then no matter what you end up getting canceling just like for literally having even a small disagreement on a specific issue and i think that the left is significantly more hard lined than this like you believe the way we believe here or any or if not you're there's a label thrown at you and then that's it and it's very like hard not to find it Right, you're you're or either a Nazi or a transphobe or a racist or a homophobe or whatever other label, right? Or a, whatever. So like, there's always a very cute label that we just have for any person on the right that disagrees with us that just literally kills the conversation. There's no engagement. And then furthermore, I think there's literally the, the other part that's so toxic about the left's cancel culture and like deplatforming uh, status is that most of the time there's literally no way, like there's no path for reconciliation. There's no path for like uh, rehabilitation. It's always just, nope, this person said this, right. they believe this, and then that's it. They will never reach out again. It's over. And, then, and, and so then there's like actually, so then what it causes is people just to feel like, yo, this is just toxic. And so now people just hide a lot of their views while still maintaining them. And the conversation isn't moving forward. And we're just hoping that the left gets more power. So views, if they're hiding their views and sitting in a community that does not agree with those group views, the, the research shows that they would be like swayed towards our position simply by existing in that fucking space. Right, if they're just sitting there not fucking saying anything, I so like the idea we need to that make more friends with, or they just, or they just slowly bleed right. out of those communities because they don't like have much in common with those people. Yeah, I want to hear from I want to hear from Aris and to uh, the rest of the panel. If you could please check the group DM, um, would be quite and respond to what I asked. Uh, thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Well, if we look at, like, say, an issue like Holocaust denial, right, um, one of, uh, Vosh, I think you mentioned that when you bring up a lot of these people's arguments, they're very easy to uh, to break down. But that it, it just totally depends on who you're engaging with. Like, I have met some Holocaust deniers um, uh, that are incredibly effective at using their rhetoric skills, um, uh, argumentation skills, like, re like all of that stuff, to make their point seem incredibly effective and really, really smart. The, I, I've met them on politics server, plenty of places. Um, and if you're not armed with like the right tools, um, with the right amount of evidence, and and you're not prepared to engage in those arguments, it, it's very easy to 
to fail in them. Um, and I wouldn't even think that someone was being really stupid. Dark, you know? Yeah. So like they always that's know why some little some little fact, some some piece of information. Exactly. That, yeah, and they could make it up too. If they just make something up on the spot, you have to be like, uh, uh, oh, um, I didn't heard about that. Uh, I guess I'll look. It's like they can completely throw you for a loop on that one. Yeah, and this is why I have like, um, it's one of the few issues that I have, I guess, uh, quote unquote, deplatformed on CC because of how much I just don't trust the average person. No fault to them. I just don't trust the average person to be able to engage with it. I know historians that have challenges uh, engaging with it unless like they specifically have focused on Holocaust denial itself. So the solution that I found with this and Viv, like this is what I wish um, more anti-fascist groups would do is create, I created like an entire doc and resources on how to engage with Holocaust deniers and how to defeat their arguments. Um, mm -hmm. And it's something that I just spread amongst CC, and I just like wish that the anti-fascist movement, and maybe they are doing this, and I just haven't received it. Yeah. But like, but Sounds I think like that that would be a super, super been... effective way to send it to content creators, to send it to anyone who has platforms, right? So that they can engage with that stuff in a responsible way. Yeah, countering anti-fascist propaganda is an incredibly, oh. uh, sorry, countering fascist propaganda is an incredibly important part of anti-fascist action. Um, and it's a good thing that most of the people on this platform, uh, on this panel already do. And I'm, yeah, I'm no way like denouncing uh, our ability to talk about these issues um, and, and to like explain why these fucking opinions are stupid. Like that's something we should absolutely be doing. Yeah. Well, that's okay. awesome. So we're all in agreement then that platforming is okay if you do it responsibly and that the left really needs to take the stick out of its ass when it comes right, to I mean, the, the, <laughs> the The point is, right, like when you have uh, when you have somebody onto your stream, right, and you argue with them and they're like fucking neo-Nazi or whatever, the, re the results are incredibly unpredictable. You think that like responsible platforming means being able to just like make them look like a fucking idiot, right? But just because you yeah. think you made them look like a fucking idiot, that doesn't mean that other people think that they that they look like a. You got to be idiot. good at what you do. Simply you got to be cool engaging. like me, and then it works. Simply, <laughs> simply engaging with like a big fucking name content creator or whatever can give like somebody uh, uh, prominence and fucking uh, notoriety within their own fucking movement. It doesn't matter whether they win or lose the argument at all. It also allows their community to come into contact with your community. The results of which are extremely fucking unpredictable, right? Okay, and but I would have. Wait, what, what, how is it unpredictable? I feel like there's a pretty predictable result and, when I argue with fascists. And at some, and it's, and sometimes have actually resulted in international fucking like uh, uh, investigations into neo-Nazi terror groups who have tried to fucking dox like mods of people's fucking discords and shit. I've been a member of like two, three de-radicalization fucking discords that were set up during my period where I was like, maybe we can somehow set up like this kind of like safe space for de-radicalization without any of the experts being fucking involved. Um, that, that did eventually devolve into international fucking uh, like investigations against it's like, done responsibly. You know, but Vosh, Vosh, I mean, Vosh, we, we, hey, Vosh, we know really they're quickly. scared of this stuff. No, no, like, Vosh, 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 most, you know, most, uh, people, most people aren't capable. Just, just, just to make, just so that we're clear here, most people aren't going to be as rhetorically proficient as you are. So the idea that like we can already pretty much assume if you get in a conversation with the Nazi that we know the outcome. That's I, I believe that in almost every case, I believe the exact same thing about destiny. Um, but. I, I would say 85% of Twitch streamers outside of YouTube. I don't feel that same way. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to go ahead and just name drop yeah, everything. The thing, the, the thing is, and so this is what's qualify. important to remember, there will always be lefties for people on the right to debate. If you're a fasci, if you're a Nazi, if you're a conservative, whatever, if you trawl around long enough on YouTube or Twitch, you will always be able to find somebody on the left to argue with. And because you're prepared mm -hmm. and they're not, you, they will almost certainly win, the fascist that is, which is why we need people on the left who are committedly competent at debating because we are the, 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 the breakers of that tactic. That happened for years on YouTube. Sargon, how many feminists did he run through? He talks to me twice. He puts out a video saying he'll never talk to a bread tuber again. These people are paper tigers. All you need yeah. to do is put a couple of competent rhetoricians mits the mix and you can completely deflate them it's like it's like throwing balloons in, into a room with like two or three needles in it you know eventually all it takes is one pop right i'm that's what i'm advocating for here and if you're not that competent then 
maybe step Stay aside, up. do your video essays or whatever, and let people like I don't know Destiny or myself handle those. That's not going to happen. Yeah, but, right? but right, and that's the point. Trying, trying, to, trying to follow in those footsteps, everybody will take a leave out of your book and be like, "Yeah, I can fucking debate an answer. I can debate like whatever." Right? Like, well, you can teach them, teach them how to debate better. I'd like to think that my audience benefits from some of that. You know, you, you you try to, you show it, you know, give them some rhetorical skills, give them some pertinent info, give them a research doc or two. I think the average person can do pretty okay against a Nazi. Again, even, even if you enough. get, even if they get dumpstered in debate, there are other factors beyond like whether or not you won the argument that like can you know, affect people. Everyone, not just to yourself, you know. I mean, you want you want their side to think like, oh, God, that was embarrassing. But that's the goal, right? Your audience likes the debate. That's fine. They were going to donate anyway. Their reaction to that embarrassment might not be like, oh, my God, I don't like this guy. It might be, oh, shit, this guy is actually a fucking threat to us and our community and the things that we want to push, right? And that might result in fucking attacks against your mod team, against your community, and so on. I think you've got Wait, canaries yeah, in the mine. I think in, until, until you see, like, somebody like me or Vosh get, like, assassinated in real life, I think most other people are okay. <laughs> if that was going to oh, happen, wait, oh, I think wait, it would have happened by now. You can make that argument with anything. Don't make video essays debunking these people because then they'll talk. That happens. There are YouTubers who have had their accounts taken down because of false flagging from neo-Nazis because they didn't mm -hmm. like the 12-minute hit, hit piece video on, on Six Hexenhammer or whatever. Yeah, That's going to happen know, because the right is out there. Back, and they use it all the fucking time. Well, well the problem is I don't think that there's another solution. Debate. I don't I don't think that there's another solution to de-radicalization. De besides like what the people right now like in this room are actively doing um and participating in like uh I, viv didn't you like create a few de-radicalization servers um and uh, i and I've, I've seen on myself but i've been like or maybe you participate couple. in them like yeah. i i've participated in a few of them and what ends up happening is like they just get infiltrated by nazis um mm -hmm. and it never actually de-radicalizes anyone because a no Nazi or no person that is, you know, Nazi adjacent, as you guys call them, right, is going to just like sit in a server that's dedicated to changing their mind actively. Yeah. Um, that's just not what, what's going to happen. They're going to go to a place like politics. Yep. Um, yeah, and that's just the truth. Fun. People it's look a for fun. Project, in my opinion, I don't think that we can just fucking reach into Nazi communities and go, ha, you're a person. We're going to now talk and I'm going to fucking de-radicalize you. Because they just go back. Yeah, and, and that's have fair. We have to learn. By the we learn by trying. They go back. Yeah. But people people want to have fun. That's what they care about most. On, people have to already be on not on the fence but like in some way doubting uh to be to be willing to engage enough to leave well the thing is um, you have to start that i don't think it's that you have to start the initial doubt and that initial doubt seems to be best done yeah. in a debate unfortunately as stupid as it is because like I, at least in my personal experience or from the emails i get maybe other people found other ways to do this but my emails is usually hey like i used to be a fan of this person and i hated you when you had a debate mm -hmm. with them but like it felt like when they had that debate i just i don't know i felt like they were kind of dumb compared to what i expected them to be and that's usually like where it starts like it's never gonna be like oh my god I watched you debate him and you crushed that guy like I'm now I'm a far lefty it's usually just more like I saw my person that I like debate a person that I hate and it felt like my person wasn't as satisfactory as I wanted them to be and then that's kind of like all where they it care about is not only that, they're dude, like I have a perfect, pack dogs yeah I have a perfect example of that like this is really really hyper embarrassing to admit um I was a huge fan of Steven Crowder Ben Shapiro Jordan yeah. Peterson all of those Based. people on the right like for, a, for a, a, quite a while ago and um the very first time where I ever like where I finally saw through like the, the nonsense that both of those all of them spew was um the first time when um there was this kid named Yusuf who got on there and just absolutely destroyed Steven Crowder and it was just like Whoa, and I saw all of his debate tactics he was doing to get past the kid, and he was like just literally schooling him. And then I went back and watched some of the other videos and saw like, oh my God, he's doing that. And he also happened to talk about a topic that I happened to like, like be very familiar with. And I saw like a lot of the tactics he was doing and it was like, oh, this guy's a scumbag. He's not genuinely arguing, right? And like, so it took a debate from a competent person. Because, but, but I would say um, to Vivian's point, um, the fact that I had been watching so many of his videos and I had never seen it because he had just been plowing through all of these really uninformed college kids who can't really formulate their ideas or don't even have a good mm -hmm. foundation for it. Like that was like the whole time it was just reinforcing all of my bias and all of those things. And I'm just like, yo, this dude is base. He really is arguing for me. Same with Ben Shapiro, dunking on these college kids. And then you finally, like it took me watching a bunch of Destiny content and like just learning a lot myself. And then it was like, when I'm listening now, it's like, oh my God, you're so feckless and dishonest and disingenuous. It's disgusting. But for so, so to Miss Vivian's point, the fact 
that if someone's able to debate and um, debate all of these other people and like they can go ahead and just argue all those people for forever and never actually find their way to Vosh or Destiny. If I was a person on the right, I would never argue against Vosh or Destiny. I just wouldn't do it because it's like, um, like my idea is like, I just want to get some easy dunks. So I'm not going to sit there and argue like against those people. Thank you. That's right? very kind. You might not even, you might not even watch their videos if you're on the right, right? But it's their hard to miss, bro. They're pretty popular. Very, 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 but their videos and their debates can, it will almost certainly inspire other people less competent people to have those debates and those will be the ones that you'll fucking see as a member of the right who's cheering for your stan right um and i'm gonna make the i'm gonna gonna make the more extremist argument i think everybody in the world should be a nazi if it's that powerful of an ideology if your ideology is so absolutely fragile that like exposing other people to conversations with combating ideologies like makes it flop that hard then i don't think it deserves to exist that long i think we better learn how to live in the new nazi paradigm maybe get nazis to like black people or jewish people whatever and move in that maybe that's a more positive direction i just think the idea that like just having conversations with these people in the far right is just so absolutely destructive to your ideology i just i don't buy that the whole reason why i got into doing these debates is similar to what vosh said earlier but lefties are and, and liberals are so fucking scared of nazis but like 95 percent of what they say is just so patently fucking absurd and it feels like i was the first person i it sounds stupid to say this but i really feel like i was the first person on the internet to realize that like wait a second why are you guys running away from all these incredibly fucking stupid arguments and like being scared and deplatforming like like just have the conversation and show how stupid they are and instead you get these people with so much more yeah but but destiny you're incredibly skilled with rhetoric right yeah but other people can do it too most people i think anyone could do that yeah other people can do it too. You can learn it. Fascists Fox. don't care. Through reason debate or reasoned argument, right? They reach no. their opinions through like fucking exposure, peer pressure, a whole bunch of other fucking reasons. Yeah, but there are other people that at least pretend to have reason arguments. Like, why is nobody in the public sphere, or maybe I've missed it, or actually I've seen it one time. We need to have like more good faith engagement with people like Jordan Peterson. Like that guy, that is a guy where if he was up against another person that really knew what they're talking about, would be destroyed. If like Jordan Peterson had to talk to Sean Carroll for like two hours, that would be an amazing conversation. But instead, what <laughs> What happens he just he ends up going to platforms like joe rogan where he gets no pushback whatsoever you know like i don't know i just it's I, it's sad to me I mean, how how fragile people easy. think their ideas are regards to broadly on. debating these groups it's really important to remember that fascists really do just care about strength when you take a look at these big online fascist communities they are not jerking off over the sanctity of their ideas they care about owning the libs they care about making trans people cry they care about yeah. pain and suffering and how much damage they can through. inflict which means all the video essays in the world are not going to change their mind. They will write off anything that is thrown their way, except yeah. for public humiliation of the person they idealize. The only way to do that's in a debate format. You can't really humiliate a person in a video essay. And I sincerely believe that all it would take, unless you're like really anxious or a super shy person, I mean, if you're like a reasonably social person, all it would take is a couple months brushing up on the issues, a little bit of rhetorical uh, you know, know-how, and you'd be able to crush pretty much every online conservative of content creator with the possible exception of some extremely talented ones or ones that rely on conspiracy i really do believe you i think you're putting them on too high of a pedestal frankly what we need to do is train people all these lefties you know they're shaking in their britches over there they're wondering like i hope i hope i never have a confrontation with these people the people they're afraid of are morons if yeah, and part of the and, 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 okay, Papash, think, it, is there anyone that you could think of right now, right? You don't need to say their name, like you don't need to give them more credence. But is there anyone that you could think of that you would feel uncomfortable platforming, right? Because but, their rhetoric right. is so good. So good at this point now. No, I used to think that about no some one. people, but at this point now, they, it's, it's they're so transparently dumb. Everything they say is worthless. The only exception would be uh, again the conspiracy bit. If I think it depends to on the topic. Like, because like if Holocaust you get, if you're gonna get like certain people, yeah, Holocaust denial or like race realism, depending on the person you get, that that that's just some shit. You would have to spend like fucking weeks reading up on like one topic to be ready for every random fucking thing they bring up. But I think part you of part of the just insult them. That works. Well, you could, yeah. Part of the training, quote unquote, that people are talking about. You don't have to train people also to be like master debaters. They just need to know a few talking points. Like I notice that like after I have a debate with somebody, like usually mm-hmm. your fans will carry those talking points into forms, and usually just that one talking point is usually enough to shut down most conversation with like people that are being. Stupid. Like, it's better to have the talking point than to just have people endlessly and needlessly moralizing everything and then just looking weak yeah, when 